An update on the Lucha Brothers AEW contract status amid rumors and reports of injury time being added on to Ray Phoenix's contract, as well as contract tampering allegations from WWE. Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn reportedly are not working on a follow-up response documentary to the Vince McMahon Netflix Miss McMahon documentary that was released last week, despite social media speculation. Shawn Michaels teases big surprises to both the men's and women's rosters of NXT as they're set for a CW Network premiere this week. Powerhouse Hobbs reportedly is cleared for in-ring action after his injury. We've got an injury update on Mark Davis. Chris Jericho reportedly wants a shot at the Ring of Honor World Championship after a victory this weekend on Collision Grand Slam. A bizarre situation involving a missing announcer for the TNT Championship match this weekend too. A big update when it comes to the TNA Impact tapings after shows were cancelled due to Hurricane Helene and reportedly now TNA contributing to the relief fund for the natural disaster. John Layfield opens up on his WWE contract status amid rumours that possibly he is or isn't under contract with WWE and the bump reportedly is gone forever. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off with the Lucha Brothers. Just what is going on with the former AEW World Tag Team Champions, their status with All Elite Wrestling, and a possible move to WWE? Well, the Lucha Brothers will still be under AEW contract for a little bit longer. Fightful Select reported this summer that the contracts of Penta El Zero Miedo and Ray Phoenix were set to expire this year, with WWE interested in bringing them aboard. Beyond this, Penta had reportedly told numerous sources back in June and since then that he'd been in contact with WWE and stated that he and his brother were a package deal and that they wanted to go to WWE's main roster as opposed to NXT. Fightful Selector reporting that AEW became aware of this and saw evidence of at least one of the talent discussing their plans to move to WWE this summer. AEW reportedly, according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, had offered the Lucha Brothers a contract this summer and were hoping to retain the duo for years to come and had immediate plans to put the trio's championships on they and Pac at AEW All In at London's Wembley Stadium. However, Penta and Phoenix didn't sign those new deals, but sources that Fightful spoke to in AEW claimed they had not discussed or communicated plans to leave. The Wrestling Observer newsletter, of course, this past Friday reported that a few months had been added to Penta's deal due to injury time by AEW, and Phoenix had substantially more added on. According to Sean Ross Sapp, this matches up with what Fightful heard was likely going to happen as sources within WWE had been made aware of at least last week that Phoenix wouldn't be imminently able to join the company. Of course, Ray Phoenix missed over six months between October 2023 and June 2024, well over three months from January 2022 to April 2022, and three months in 2021 as well. When time was added to Penta's deal, Fightful have been told that was around the time he publicly tweeted that his present was AEW, and he was hoping the situation didn't result in Phoenix being held to the injury time on his deal, as there's much more that can be added. Now, Fightful say they've not yet heard if AEW plans on having them work in the future or if they're just put on ice but it was confirmed to Fightful if they are under contract they're still being paid. Now Fightful say they didn't get a straight answer as to the motivation of extending both deals outside of AEW wanting to get the contracted amount of time out of the duo that they were signed for per the terms of the contract. It is expected by talent they'll be asked to put talent over at the very least if they are indeed planning on leaving. Now when discussing contract tampering there's no oversight or league that could do much about contract tampering so to speak as it's not a law in sports as opposed to a rule in leagues however interference with contract that causes a breach is and is largely what is actually discussed when bringing up contract tampering in wrestling this is why if you ever listen to a Bruce Pritchard podcast, he'll reference asking about talent's contract status when they would inquire about work with WWE in the past. Now, for those wondering, adding injury time has been common practice within WWE, TNA Wrestling, as well as AEW. 
Now, contrary to reports, Penta and Phoenix are not signed by WWE in any capacity, and WWE has never acknowledged any reports or rumors about them in official capacity either. Now, obviously, so many people are still discussing the fallout and the reaction to the Mr. McMahon Netflix documentary last week. And there were rumors going around on social media we could see a response from the former WWE chairman himself. Well, not so much. Kevin Dunn, the former WWE executive, head of television, and Vince McMahon are not working together again, contrary to rumors on social media. Now, it was claimed over the weekend by Fadeaway Media that the former WWE CEO was working with his close confidant again on a response to the Mr. McMahon docuseries released on Netflix. They tweeted out, quote, Vince McMahon is actively working with former WWE executive producer Kevin Dunn to release a response piece to his Netflix documentary. Now, Mike Johnson of PW Insider has since reported, however, that Dunn is not working on a response to the docuseries with Vince McMahon, and Dunn is not currently working on any McMahon-centric projects at the moment. Of course, Vince McMahon and Kevin Dunn worked together for over 40 years, with Dunn serving as WWE executive producer and chief of global television distribution until his departure at the end of 2023. Vince McMahon is no longer involved with WWE outside of possibly owning some very little shares following his resignation as TKO executive chairman in January of this year. McMahon remains under federal investigation for several allegations of sexual assault. Vince McMahon made some wild claims within the Mr. McMahon docuseries, including that The Undertaker can't remember WrestleMania 30 because he was so traumatized by the streak ending as opposed to suffering a concussion. Now, NXT is headed to the CW this week, and according to Shawn Michaels, who of course runs the show, big surprises could be in store. There has been a lot of speculation about the new era of NXT ahead of the premiere episode on the CW tomorrow on October 1st. With highly touted signings Julia and Stephanie Vacqua, both in the NXT Women's Championship picture, Shawn Michaels has now indicated that WWE has surprises in store for both the men's and women's rosters of NXT. Teasing the surprises for both sides of the roster, Michaels noted for the following to Sports Illustrated's The Takedown. He said, quote, The best stacked women's roster in all of the world, if you ask me, Roxanne Perez, Kalani Jordan, Jada Parker, and then of course, two of the hottest free agents in all of the world with Julia and Stephanie Vacqua. And there are other big, big surprises coming down the pike. If you thought we were stacked before, you haven't seen anything yet. And that goes for both sides of the roster. And when it comes to NXT, of course, we know that the majority of their episodes will still be taped at the WWE Performance Center or broadcast live from WWE's training venue. But it looks like the Performance Center will be going through some changes. On September 24th, NXT had their final show on the USA Network before they began airing on the CW this week. It will also be the beginning of a two-week trip on the road for the brand in Chicago and St. Louis, respectively. It now appears WWE will use that opportunity to make some changes at the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. Fightful Select's Corey Brennan has learned that following Tuesday's taping, the NXT set was taken down with updates planned to the set. In asking with NXT sources, it is unclear if there will just be updates or an entire new set for the brand. Of course, this current NXT set has been used since the debut of NXT 2.0 at the WWE Performance Center. Now, powerhouse Hobbs reportedly is on his way back to in-ring action. Fightful Select's Sean Rossap has learned with powerhouse Hobbs that he was cleared in the last few weeks to return to the ring. He's been out of action since the end of April with a knee injury during a match against John Moxley. He underwent surgery to repair the injury. Fightful Select had reported that Hobbs had been backstage at recent AEW tapings. Fightful have also been told he's undergone extensive in-ring testing ahead of being cleared, which has become the standard in AEW. As of right now, he's awaiting creative plans, but he was pictured at Arthur Ashe Stadium last week for the Grand Slam tapings. Now, what about Mark Davis? What about him and the Aussie Open tag team? Now, he's been out of action for close to a year now, last competing in the inaugural AEW WrestleDream pay-per-view on October 1st, 2023. The status of Aussie Open's Mark Davis has become a persistent question among AEW fans, with very few updates since his initial wrist injury was reported over a year ago. Davis's tag team partner Kyle Fletcher, who has found success as a solo act in his partner's absence, recently gave a positive update on the 34-year-old, but admitted it was not his place to share further details of his status and plans for a return. 
following this, Fightful Select have provided an update on Davis, with Sean Rossett reporting that the Aussie Open star is progressing well, but is still recovering from what sidelined him initially. While a wrist injury was initially reported to be the cause of Davis's absence, Fightful noted that specifics of what sidelined him have remained quiet, with those close to Davis preferring it was his story to tell. The report continued to note that AEW had never set a timetable on Davis's return, or at least not one that was commonly known by many backstage. Now, Chris Jericho, could he become a two-time Ring of Honor World Champion? Well, it looks like that's what the learning tree wants. On the Grand Slam edition of Collision, taped on September 25th, it played host to a trios match with Ring of Honor World Champion Mark Briscoe, Orange Cassidy, and Kyle O'Reilly teaming up against Chris Jericho, Big Bill, and Brian Keith. Jericho's team picked up the victory of Jericho himself pinning Briscoe after Big Bill chokeslam Briscoe through a table. After the match, Jericho made it clear he wants a shot at Briscoe's Ring of Honor World Championship, with commentary also repeatedly making that clear. Now, it's unknown right now when the match would take place, but it does seem inevitable based on Jericho's actions post-match and the announcer's comments. The details of the next Ring of Honor pay-per-view have not been announced, but the match could just take place on an AEW show. Jericho had won previous reign as Ring of Honor World Champion, winning it from Claudio Castagnoli at Dynamite Grand Slam back in September of 2022, before losing it back to Castagnoli at Ring of Honor Final Battle the following December. Now, there was a very strange situation involved in the TNT Championship match on this show as well. Much of Collision Grand Slam was taped following Dynamite on Wednesday at Arthur Ashe Stadium on September 25th, but the TNT title, title open challenge between Jack Perry and Minoru Suzuki was actually taped before Dynamite might went on the air. This led to a bizarre situation of Tony Schiavone, Matt Menard, and Ian Riccoboni being at the commentary desk for Collision, only for Riccoboni to disappear for the TNT title match. The Ring of Honor announcer remained on the call for the match, though, and his absence was explained by Tony Schiavone, who claimed Riccoboni was hiding on the announce table because of the chaos that ensued during the match. Now, Brian Alvarez reported on Wrestling Observer Radio that Rick Caboni was not in the building when Jack Perry vs. Minoru Suzuki was taped, so AEW decided to have Shivani and Daddy Magic call the match live and then add Rick Caboni's comments during post-production. Quote, what happened was they had Tony and Daddy Magic do commentary and pretend that he was there. So they did not do commentary in post, only Ian did. So they had to like leave spaces where he would say things and then they did the rest by themselves. Anyway, he wasn't there. They did the entire match pretending he was there and then they had to cover for when they got a close-up of the announcers and he wasn't there. He was an invisible announcer, Alvarez said. Riccoboni, fortunately, came out from under the commentary table following the TNT title match. Now, a bit of an update when it comes to the TNA Impact tapings that were cancelled due to Hurricane Helene and what TNA has done to rectify this situation. Now, of course, due to the events outside of their control, TNA unfortunately had to cancel this past week's Spartanburg shows after multiple delays. According to Sean Ross Apple Fight for Select, TNA went above and beyond to try and get the tapings in, starting with Friday all the way to next Tuesday, as they were to serve as the build for TNA. TNA's Bound for Glory pay-per-view. TNA had also put heavy promotion into the tapings, having the Hardy Boys travel to Spartanburg early and do media. Some staff that was already on the scene faced a rough situation as power went out at the hotel they stayed at. There were no vacancies elsewhere and some had to charge their devices in their cars due to the lack of power. Due to the dangers of Hurricane Helene and a lack of power at the venue they were running, the decision was ultimately made to cancel the shows. Now, TNA did find a solution to this. It was later confirmed that they will be taping at Skyway Studios in Nashville, on Wednesday, October 2nd and Thursday, October 3rd, following the cancellation of their Spartanburg shows due to Hurricane Helene. TNA then later released a statement confirming all of this and announcing that the proceeds were going to be going to a good cause. TNA said, quote, TNA Wrestling brings the road to Bound for Glory to Nashville on Wednesday and Thursday, October 2nd and 3rd. Tickets for both shows are $10 each, with all proceeds donated to Hurricane Helene relief efforts in Spartanburg, South Carolina. TNA Wrestling brings the final matches on the road to Bound for Glory to Nashville, Tennessee on Wednesday and Thursday, October 2nd and 3rd at Skyway Studios. All tickets for both shows are $10 each, and all proceeds from both shows will be donated to Hurricane Helene relief efforts in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Tickets go on sale Monday, September 30th at 10 a.m. Eastern. 
The TNA shows in Spartanburg, originally scheduled for September 27th and 28th, were cancelled due to the catastrophic hurricane, which left millions still without power across the southeast. TNA will have auctions at both shows for the match used and autographed memorabilia, plus unique collectibles for sale, with all proceeds going to Hurricane Helene relief efforts in Spartanburg. Fans will have the opportunity to donate additionally to the relief efforts at both shows. TNA officials have been in contact with members of the Spartanburg Police and Fire Departments as members of both departments were scheduled to attend the TNA shows in Spartanburg. The Nashville shows will start at 7 p.m. with doors opening at Skyway Studios at 6 p.m. All tickets are general admission. All the TNA stars will be in Nashville for the final matches before Bound for Glory, which is on October 26th in Detroit. Now, obviously, again, this has been a bit of a difficult situation for all involved and thoughts go out to everyone affected by Hurricane Helene. Now, JBL, John Bradshaw Layfall, just what is going on with him at the moment? Over the past couple of months, if you haven't been aware, John Bradshaw Layfield, JBL, has shown up in TNA Wrestling, AAA, GCW, and MLW. Now, much has been made of JBL's status in wrestling and whether or not he's still under some type of contract to WWE as he makes these appearances. Speaking on a Q&A with Sports Keeda, JBL was asked if he's still under a deal with WWE. He said, quote, I'm going to answer this as politically correct as correct as possible. I've never answered a question about my contract. I can tell you 100% this. I've seen speculation about me on the internet. It's all wrong. 100% wrong. I'm not going to answer whether I am or not because WWE has always had a confidentiality clause in it. I've never thought it was good business to discuss my contract or anybody else's. Sorry that I'm refusing to answer. The speculation about me has been wrong, he said. Of course, JBL has not appeared on WWE television since 2023. And finally, the WWE digital show The Bump looks like it's gone forever. Now, WWE's The Bump went on hiatus in late May, which was originally only planned to be for five weeks, but the show has failed to return since then. In an update, Mike Johnson of PW Insider noted the show is, quote, dead and buried under WWE HQ, and The Bump is, quote, 99.9% .9 gone forever. Now, why WWE decided to scrap the bump is unknown. The show had aired on WWE Network slash Peacock and WWE's YouTube channel since 2019. The bump primarily centered around interviews with WWE wrestlers and personalities. And at the time of going on hiatus, the bump was hosted by Sam Roberts, Megan Morant, and Ryan Popola. Previous hosts include Matt Camp, who was fired by WWE in February, and Kayla Braxton, who left WWE in June. WWE's weekly programming currently consists of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown on USA Network, NXT, which moves to the CW from October 1st, and it looks like possibly there could be additional digital shows that are added surrounding those shows. But there you go, guys, the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video. Click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you again very soon.